Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. Um, I hope everyone had a fabulous week, and I'm really excited about next week on The Daily Stack. Um, we're continuing to do deep dives on really important topics, and you know, today is about marketing on a budget with Cynthia Sandoval, and next week we're going to talk about a few uh, marketing tactics. One, uh, LinkedIn growth strategies. We're also going to be talking about using a video to drive growth. So um, that's one that I know I'm going to be paying very close attention to because uh, we are starting to build out that strategy. Um, and actually, special announcement, you're hearing it here first. Uh, after our talk with Resound Marketing, um, Danny and I noticed that the holiday gift guides came up like a lot in the talk. And so and it also came up with some urgency. Alana was saying, you really need to like be getting your act together on holiday gift guides if that's a priority for you. So uh, we're gonna do a holiday gift guide workshop um, next Tuesday. Danny, can you just put the link in there or, or confirm the time? Cause I am now not confident that's correct. And we're making it free for everybody. This is a bonus talk. This is going to be, um, I think, Tuesday at 1 p.m. Danny's going to confirm. And we want to see everybody there who has any interest in getting their products into holiday gift guides. Um, we're going to be covering really tactical stuff. Uh, and we're going to be workshopping with one of our members. And so it's, it's going to be fantastic. We're really excited about it. Um, and so I just wanted to highlight that we'll be sending it out in the weekly announcement uh, this uh, on, on Monday morning as well. So uh, that's that. But today is about marketing on a budget. And it is with Cynthia. Hello, Cynthia. Hello, everyone. How are you guys doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing really well. I'm uh, hearing like a little echo. It's kind of weird hearing my voice. <laughs> okay. Is it is it really bad? No, I could. Okay. I could get well, used to you know, it. While we're still at the beginning, I'm just gonna actually close you out and come back in and let's see if it's still going. Okay. Sounds good. Thank okay. you. No problem. All right, everybody. Hopefully, we'll get our any technical issues out of the way. Uh, Cynthia and I were on right before this and it was absolutely okay. So hopefully uh, we'll get back to that in just a minute. And as uh, some of you know, because I talk incessantly about uh, what my family is doing during COVID, we are back in New York City and back in the Stacklist office. And <laughs> It is so loud on the street. So I'm going to figure out a way to deal with that going forward. But um, Danny's like slacking me like, Amanda, it's too loud. The honking is too much. Cynthia, can That's you hear yourself? You. <laughs> is there an echo? A little bit, but you know, I just lowered myself and I'll just deal with it. It's all good. Well, today, Cynthia is going to be giving a presentation. And, and Cynthia, I know this is like largely focused on paid media. So, right. you know, just to cover the things out the outset that we, we aren't going to cover much of. PR and branding, but Stacklist has, a, a, we have a ton of daily stack episodes on doing that. So I would encourage everyone to just go into the library. There's a lot on PR for on a budget, branding on a budget. Um, and I know you mentioned you also know a decent amount about organic marketing. Um, yeah, I work with a lot with Facebook ads. So naturally I have to be pretty decent at all the organic side of things. So if your questions are also include that kind of marketing on a budget, you know, send them our way or, uh, you know, email Cynthia um, yeah. or email me and Danny to uh, provide kind of some recommendations about what other talks you might want to check out. But um, paid media on a budget. I can't wait to to see your presentation and uh, what you have to say, Cynthia. Oh, do you just first want to give us a little bit about your background? Let me stop sharing. <laughs> no, no. no. Um, so no, I actually no, no. go into that a little bit in the presentation. So okay. I might answer all your questions, but my name is Cynthia. I'm a paid media strategist. I might repeat this later on. Um, I mainly work with Google ads and Facebook ads. So that's what I'm mainly going to talk about today. That's a pretty robust. These are pretty robust platforms. So like Amanda said, if you have any questions, there are certain sections where I go zero to 100 really quick. So just submit your questions and I'm happy to answer them. Or you could just email me directly at C uh, at Cynthia's marketing.com, whatever makes sense for you um, here to help. Thanks, Cynthia. And everybody, if you ask a question, can you put it into the ask a question link? Um, that would be helpful. And I'll try to keep them flowing. 
awesome. All right, awesome. take it away, Cynthia. All right, I'm gonna share my screen right now. Hopefully no technical issues. <laughs> 2020 has been crazy. All right, guys, can you see my screen okay? Looks great. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So today, as Amanda said, I'm gonna be talking to you about marketing on a budget, specifically speaking about paid media strategy. So honing in on paid media. And like I said before, if anything, um, you know, a lot of what I talk about is uh, Google ads and Facebook ads are very robust platforms, like I mentioned before. So if anything uh, goes over your head, just feel free to ask me any questions, submit your questions. You know, I work to keep this very high level and strategic. Um, so get ready to take notes. And going into a little bit about me again, I'm a paid media strategist. I use Google ads and Facebook ads to scale businesses effectively. And I work to do so profitably. Uh, I do dabble also in Snapchat um, advertising. That's something we've been testing a lot with my clients. Um, some Pinterest and some good old Bing, but Try not to really mess with Bing too much. <laughs> Some more about me. I've worked with award-winning digital marketing agencies managing enterprise-level accounts for big brands such as Capital One, Chase, as well as small to medium direct-to-consumer uh, brands, and even mom-and-pop shops. So I'm very used to working on a budget. I previously worked with Dave and John from ABC Shark Tank, and I managed his digital marketing uh, department. Uh, I've generated over $10 million in revenue for my paid media clients, and hopefully... I can generate a ton more. And so as a paid media strategist, I'm constantly working to sculpt traffic, reduce wasted spend while working to uniquely position my client's brand amongst a sea of competition, right? Regardless of how big or small the budget is, that is my goal always. Um, but another thing with a budget, you know, like having a big or small budget is rather subjective. Uh, sometimes a $5,000 budget can seem like a big budget. Some to other people that might seem very small. So what's important is to be effective um, and start things off on the right foot. Um, so today I'm really going to focus on maximizing marketing efforts uh, to get the best bang uh, for your buck, to really squeeze out all the juice out of your marketing dollars, each and every dollar. So here's what you'll learn today. You'll learn how to define your goals uh, when advertising. You'll learn how to determine which platforms to advertise on. You'll learn how to define your success metrics. You'll learn how to create messaging that truly resonates and converts your target audience. Ways to measure, you'll learn ways to measure outcomes and optimize results. And you'll learn this through a framework that I use when onboarding my own clients. So my process is really an objective first framework. Um, so setting objectives, defining KPIs, designing a strategy accordingly, launching and measuring those outcomes and optimizing results. And you can actually use this framework really for any marketing campaign, both organic, both paid email, PR, uh, social media, organic social media, um, to both budgets, big and small. This is absolutely crucial. Uh, and I'm going to go to dive into more detail into each and every one of these phases. So be a quick question. Will you be cool with us sharing this presentation? Sharing the presentation? Um, what do you mean? With the audience. Oh, am I not? Am I not sharing it now? No, 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 you are, but oh, okay. you pass these notes along. We just had a question come in and I'm sure a lot of people are wondering that. Oh, like afterwards? Oh yeah, yeah. so I, I sent in these uh, slides to Danny so you yep. can review them whenever. And awesome. I recommend you do that. I'm happy to send those around. Just send Danny or Cynthia an email, hi at stacklist.com, Danny at stacklist.com and we'll get it to you. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. <laughs> um, so first phase, setting objectives, right? You want to understand, you want to know, obviously, you know your goals as a business, but you want to have more specific uh, goals. So maybe quarterly goals, your sales revenue increased by how much and by when, right? Oftentimes, prospects uh, come to me and they have very big lofty goals. And um, mainly their goal is to increase revenue. That's great. Uh, we all want more money in our pocket. D who doesn't want more money? Like, that's what everyone wants. That's what I want. Um, so you want to break up those macro goals into more micro goals and specifically smart goals. So specific, measurable, 
achievable, realistic, and timely. So an example of a smart goal would be um, after auditing an account. Oh man, I had the little itch to sneeze, sorry. So after auditing an account um, and you're understanding, and I'm taking the time to understand their CPCs, their historical data, I'm doing all that research accordingly, analyzing their competition, all that stuff. My goal then would, I would tell the client, um, our goal would be to increase transaction volume by 20%, bring down CPA costs per acquisition by 20%, per month, month over month. So that right there is specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. Obviously, you know, the percentages really depends on the account, but uh, that's something that I would tell a client. If you have a lower budget, maybe if you're running ads already, uh, maybe your goal is to bring down and shave CPA by 20% and increase your ROAS, which is return on ad spend uh, by 20% per month or quarterly even. So you want to be very clear on what it is you want to achieve from the jump, uh, because that will allow you to trim the fat, just be more effective, uh, generate more effective results with really any marketing campaign. And uh, for the startups part. who are doing maybe their first paid campaign, um, mm -hmm. do you have any examples of you know what a good first month goal might look like for them? An example of a good first month goal. Um, so if you do your research, right, and you establish, uh, you check out uh, what exactly are benchmark KPIs within that um, industry, which I'll delve into a little bit more, um, and you notice that on average, uh, your click-through rate, an average click-through rate within your industry is 2%. So maybe you want to launch campaigns and make sure you hit uh, a click-through rate of 2%. And... Uh, based on your, I'll delve into this also a little bit more, based on your budget that you can allot, that makes sense uh, taking into account your overhead costs. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to aim for a CPA, a cost per acquisition of $50. So you want to, even if you've never ran campaigns before, you still want to set those measurable goals. And ideally, uh, you're either working with someone that can help you set them or you're doing them yourself and you're doing the research. Accordingly. And we'll delve into that a little bit later. Okay, great. Awesome. So defining your KPIs, so kind of what you're asking right now a little bit. Um, you want to ask yourself and you want to really dig deep and understand what metrics really move the needle for your business. Is it signups, transactions? Which metrics lead to an increase in revenue and profit? So if you're an e-commerce company, I, I work a lot with e-commerce companies. Um, the metrics that really matter for e-commerce um, are average order value, e-commerce conversion rate, your CPA, your cost per acquisition, how much it costs to generate a sale, um, and your ROAS, which is your return on ad spend. Um, so for every dollar you put in, how many dollars are you getting back, right? Um, researching your industry benchmark CPCs and click-through rates, CTRs, per platform. So this is generally a Google search away. Um, and it's just like a pulse, not on all of this is accurate. There are so many variables involved, but you just want to have a, a pulse initially if you're launching your first campaign. Uh, what is standard for your industry? You Google search that. So if you're a SaaS business, um, you'll search average CPCs um, for SaaS businesses on Facebook advertising or average click-through rates CTRs uh, for a SaaS business on Google. So that's a good way to just like get a pulse to understand But when you're launching your first campaign or if you've been doing this. Um, and overall knowing your numbers to determine your success metrics and profitability. And this can be really tough to decipher, especially if you're first starting out. Uh, but I do have a solution for you that can help uh, really hone it in uh, to figure out your numbers and overall profitability. Big success. Um, so I have two different calculators. This is a paid media budget calculator. And I built these out within Google Sheets. I thought about creating like a video, but it just didn't work out. So I just have a screenshot here. Um, but this Google Sheet or both of these Google Sheets are 
for lead generation businesses, uh, business model, and also e-commerce businesses. Um, they're built in, pre-built with a ton of uh, different formulas. So you can add in your budget that you have allotted maybe. Um, if you have a budget of like $1,000, right? And you research that your average cost per click is 95 cents, you just plug that in and you can see, um, and also based on your, if you're paying someone to help you out with, with advertising or if you're doing this yourself and factoring in your margins as well, you can see what makes sense, what ROAS you have to hit in order to be profitable and how much revenue you can generate. Um, this calculator, like I said, will help you determine profitability based on your overhead fees and margins. And it'll show you how all advertising really affects your bottom line and how many factors are involved, really. There's a ton of research that you would have to do on your end. Um, and if you have any questions with that, like, like I said, feel free to reach out to me directly and we can work that out. Um, and it would allow you to determine your ideal CPA that you have to hit, right? Your your ROAS target, return on ad spend target, based on either your historical data or industry benchmarks that you're researching. Um, and it'll help you determine a budget that really aligns with your business goals based on what you can spend. If your budget is super limited, now you can see how you're gonna squeeze the juice out of every marketing dollar that you put into the engine. Um, you'll also figure out if whether paid advertising even works for you, if it makes sense for you, if it's worth investing in right now. Or maybe this is something that you hold off and implement at a later stage. So you can either go to this uh, website, uh, this URL, CynthiaSmarketing.com slash budget calculator, or I can maybe work with Danny and Amanda and send that your way. You can hit them up and we'll work that yeah. out from there. Does that make, is that okay, Amanda? Yeah, that's great. I mean, you can always reach us at hi at stacklist.com, kind of bottom line. And uh, Danny just shared the link to the file and uh, Cynthia's email address. Uh, Cynthia, can we stay on this slide for one second? Because you have the inputs here as kind of, uh, are the inputs in Aqua the, um, Okay, so so can you just can we start then just look at it, starting with the business metrics? Mm -hmm. You have gross revenue. So the target that you want return on investment or return on ad spend, right, um, right there. So forty one point seven is. So can you? I just want to know for the people who might be like plugging that in first, how mm -hmm. can you use this information to kind of go back to what you should be spending per month or what you you know should be targeting for the inputs? So with this calculator, it's like you can actually, you can plug and play accordingly. So okay. maybe you're, this is an e, this is specifically the screenshot for e-commerce. So obviously your sales rate is 100%, but you can factor in your return rate, how often do you get returns? Um, and there's one for lead generation as well. You, you're just basically plugging in your numbers and your overhead costs. And you plug that in where there's like the little aqua parts and mm. you will generate at the end um, the return on ads that you get based on those metrics specific for your business. This really, this is just a screenshot, but with the calculators, it's really plug and play. You can test okay. accordingly. And you'll see like, you know, if you're e-commerce, I wish I could, plug and play with it right here. But if your e-commerce conversion rate is 1% as opposed to 2%, which is yeah. how effective that your, your landing pages or your website is and converting the paid traffic that goes to your website, this will change dramatically. All of these numbers will change. Accordingly. Now, now, um, I, you know, a lot of this, as, as I think people know, is going to be you're going to have to be making some assumptions and then, you know, tweaking things as you go. Um, I do want to just get clarity on the, um, you know, you have per sale and in the beginning, are you here recommending that you really base things per sale and wait to use LTV as a benchmark? Like, are, is that kind of a deliberate uh, way is that kind of deliberate here? Like you would, are you recommending approach it on a per sale basis rather than LTV at the beginning? Yeah, um, I think LTV is something that you work on optimizing, even like if you're launching campaigns, um, yeah. whether you have campaigns running, it's something that I'm constantly working with my clients on improving. Yeah. Um, when you talk about LTV and I'll touch base on this towards the end a little bit, but since we're on this topic now, LTV and all of your organic efforts really 
help your paid advertising efforts, right? All of it really works together. At least you want it to work together. Yeah. Um, generally speaking with paid media, it's a scaling tool. It's to scale all of your um, current marketing efforts. Uh, so if you're doing really well organically on Facebook and Instagram, it just makes sense to test out Facebook ads if your budget allots or allows. Um, yeah. But you're always factoring things like and trying to improve your e-commerce conversion rate, your overall conversion rate. There's so many other factors that would help your paid media efforts. But when you're starting off, you really at least want to get a pulse of these numbers and you can refine them as you go. Right. And it's it's, it's in a way the most conservative assumption you can make to do it on a per sale basis. If you know, as you get LTV, you'll get more latitude and you can spend more. But this is the yeah. Um, so anyway, I keep going. Don't interrupt too much. No, it's OK. It's OK. Feel, keep, keep them coming. Um, so the next question is on, after you understand really your break even numbers and what numbers in your targets that you have to hit in order to make, be profitable, in order to understand, uh, in order for advertising to be effective for you. That leads to another common question and people ask, well, should I advertise on Google or on Facebook, right? Some interesting stats are just one interesting stat, actually. Google and Facebook hold the largest share of total U.S. digital ad spend with 39 and 20 percent, respectively. Uh, there are other platforms that increased uh, over the years, like Amazon uh, and Snapchat. These two work really well with e-commerce, by the way. Uh, but these are the two main heavy hitters. And now when you're asking, you know, is there, should I advertise on Google or Facebook? Really, like, it, it depends. It's, it's pretty complicated. Um, it depends on who you're targeting. It depends on how expensive your clicks are. Uh, so we would also base this off of your break-even points, um, your budget, the competition, which is how expensive your clicks are. But let's go ahead and jump into more specifics of each platform to help you determine just high level which platform would make sense for your business. So Google ads. When referring to text ads, Google is mainly keyword based targeting and it's mainly driven by a high user intent. Now, this is referring to text ads, like I said, but text ads meaning search ads. There's different types of campaigns on Google that you can run. There are search ads, which are uh, keyword based, keyword uh, based targeting, um, their shopping display and also YouTube video ads. Uh, but the main Google's mainly known for its keyword based targeting and shopping. So users already are in a buying mindset, right? They know what they want and are searching for something specifically. Uh, for example, uh, the, the other day I was looking up standing desks because uh, quarantine 15 is is real. And uh, I'm looking for ways to kind of like optimize getting fit while like not doing much. So I'm researching electric standing desks, right? And so I'll search standing desks for my home office, right? And then on the right, you could see you get ads, shopping ads, and at the bottom, text ads. And uh, this can get a lot more complex and talking about the mechanics of each of these campaigns, but I'm going to keep it high level. So for Facebook and Instagram ads, Facebook ads are more audience and interest based targeting. Um, this is more interrupt marketing, meaning that you're interrupting someone as they're going about their day scrolling. Um, and then you hit them with a really engaging ad, really creative ad that ideally captures their attention and gets them to convert to whatever your conversion goal is. And Facebook has a bigger audience inventory now more than ever. You can get really creative with your targeting. Um, there's different, you can target based on certain events, like life events. You can target people based on their birthdays or anniversaries uh, or interest-based targeting and also demographic targeting. So you can get really creative. Uh, visuals matter here a lot more than Google. And social media platforms capture 33% of the time users spend online. So reaching your audience where they already spend online makes a ton of sense, right? Um, and 96 percent of B2C marketers say that Facebook is a valuable marketing platform. Facebook is generally the platform of choice uh, for direct to consumer marketer B2C marketers. So 
curious guys what makes more sense for your business you know are you thinking about facebook ads google ads or maybe some kind of combo of both which i'll delve into later but let me know well just one question going back to google search um when you say something is high intent what are some of the businesses that would be a really good match for high intent quick buy? So you said the standing desk. Does that mean that standing desks are better for Google search and or then I Instagram or Facebook? Or does it mean like how you frame the standing desk for your Google search should be different from how you frame it for your Facebook ad? So the mechanics of each of these platforms, Google and Facebook are different, right? Um, they're targeting is different. So I would say like, I give this example later, but B2B will performs a lot better uh, on Google as opposed to Facebook, because it's very hard to get because anyone it's very hard to target certain business owners on Facebook, anyone can claim that they're like Superman or something. Whereas with Google, um, if you sell a service like landing page designs or something, you can target specific queries and search terms like landing page design agencies near me and you'll pop up. It's hard to target that on Facebook. And so people are already in this buying mindset. They already know what they want. Like for me, I knew what I want with the standing desk. And I actually have a client who sells standing desks. And um, we do a combination of Facebook and Google. But sometimes Google makes sense for you. Sometimes Facebook makes sense for you. It really depends. And I'll actually, uh, I'm going to go through the slide because this might answer your question. Is that okay? Yeah, totally. Awesome. So when and you're designing a strategy, I'll make sure later, we ask about that later. I, we had a question come in, but yeah. Oh, okay. Wait, we can answer that question. That's fine. Oh, okay. Well, let's. Um, well, we'd like to know about Snapchat and your opinions there. Oh, Snapchat. Um, so if you're just. Hey, everybody, I need you to ask these questions on the ask a question link, please. <laughs> I can't do this on chat. Oh, no. I want to get to all I, of them. <laughs> like, okay, go like ahead. That. Snapchat, thoughts. <laughs> so Snapchat, these uh, like auxiliary platforms, uh, if you're testing a new platform, you really want to maximize on a platform like Google and Facebook first before you jump on to Snapchat. Snapchat is for, or testing on Snapchat or maybe Pinterest if you have like a lot of, uh, if you're targeting more of a female demo. Um, these platforms make sense when you're scaling, not so much when you're starting out. Uh, if you do, if your budget allows and you've really maxed out Google and Facebook, excuse me, then it makes sense to maybe test out Snapchat. Um, um, Pinterest or uh, I haven't touched TikTok. I think it's so, so you're kind of saying Snapchat and, and Pinterest are like, you have to know something you have to be at scale. You have to be, you have to be like more sophisticated with what you're doing and with how your business functions on these platforms um, and related on the platform. I know Alex is like TikTok. I mean, you have you had any clients use it? No, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Um, TikTok is like serving so many ads for marketers on and giving them like $300 credit, but it just doesn't make sense for my clients demo. And, you know, I rather go for lower hanging fruit, like Google and Facebook test out, uh, I'll get into this later, but like a small remarketing campaign on Snapchat and then scale the account from there, add in more money as results get better and better. If they do, if they don't, I'll stop. Um, a question from Anna. Um, how have you found YouTube ads as a complement to Facebook for B2C targeting? Really great. Um, really great. YouTube is usually expensive with cost per clicks, but extremely effective. I'll start off with YouTube as with a remarketing campaign. So I'll delve into this a little bit more, but remarketing, if you're not familiar, is essentially anyone who's interacted with your brand in any kind of way who's... Um, into your website, maybe if you're e-commerce, um, added to cart and then bounced, uh, those would be remarketing audience segments. So YouTube has been extremely effective. I'll do a lot of uh, YouTube remarketing. So anyone that lands on my website, I'll remarket um, that specific audience segment with an ad for uh, that's highlighting a certain feature or benefit of, of the about the product or service or whatever it is. 
Um, so that works really well. Um, for more like prospecting campaigns, uh, targeting based on what works uh, certain channels that your end user likes to watch, targeting based on that. Um, that's a really good strategy. And you can also do custom intents. So like I said, Google is a huge, robust platform. There's so many moving parts. So uh, you can email me and we can nerd out and talk about it in more detail, but custom and intents. I'm going to ask one more follow-up question on that. Well, no, maybe many more, but uh, YouTube, uh, sorry, remarketing. Is that an okay strategy for day one? Like you're loading your search, you're loading face, you know, is your you know you're loading to google already can you pull a trigger on uh remarketing you know from the outset or should you wait it depends on the kind of traffic that you're getting to your site already so remarketing is a great way to start it's low-hanging fruit if you're getting a ton of traffic organically and you want to stay top of mind while your prospect is going through the research phase and you know you want to hit them with some an ad that talks about some more features or maybe hits them with some kind of coupon code, some added incentive uh, while they're researching to get them confirm convert. Remarketing is really effective to do that. But it, the, the answer is really, it depends on the traffic that's already um, being generated to your website. If you have a lot of organic, yeah, go for remarketing. It's low hanging fruit. If you don't, yeah. it doesn't really make sense to do that. You have no traffic. You have to populate Great. your audiences. Makes sense. Let me let I'm going to keep going through the questions, but please you go ahead with design a strategy. <laughs> okay. Okay. This might answer some questions for you guys. So you design high level, you design a strategy based on a budget that makes sense for your business, given your current revenue, your overhead, overhead costs and your margins, right? The mechanics and limitations of the platform that you're advertising on. So you know, like if you're running search ads on Google, the mechanics of that is a lot different than Facebook, right? It's keyword based, whereas Facebook is audience based. So you want to optimize that accordingly. You craft a strategy based on how people buy slash search for your product or service. How are they finding you? You know, think about that. And who your target audience is, right? Um, this next slide here. When structuring campaigns and thinking about the overall structure of campaigns, uh, we always, advertisers generally refer to the buyer's funnel. And I'm sure you're similar, uh, aware of this, or if you've seen this before. Essentially, it's a funnel and a visual representation, representation of how people, uh, the overall journey from awareness all the way down to a conversion. In this case, it would be like a sale. So we'll structure campaigns in that way. We'll have top of the funnel campaigns, which would be prospecting campaigns. So targeting cold audiences, new audiences that have never heard of your brand. And then we'll have more middle of the funnel campaigns. These are warmer audiences. An example of this would be social media followers. So if you're running Facebook campaigns and you're thinking of a middle of the funnel um, targeting option, you can target your social media followers that are already following you. Bottom of the funnel campaign. So generally speaking, these are remarketing audiences. Like I mentioned before, these are people that have previously engaged with your website in some kind of way. If it's add to cart, um, you're remarketing the user that added to cart, but bounced, you're hitting them with an ad, maybe giving them an ad an incentive of a 10% coupon code or something. So that's how very high level of how we structure campaigns. Um, but to drive that point home, I'm going to apply that structure with you in real time uh, with a real world example. So this is Yak. Yak is a super cool tool that I learned about recently. It's an audio first messaging tool for the remote world. So they compete with um, Slack, Zoom, Loom, um, I actually was really frustrated with Slack, uh, just like sending text messages back and forth or texting or typing all the time was super annoying. And I was thinking of a way, like, is there an app that I could just like integrate with Slack where I could just send voice messages? Because that's why I love WhatsApp. And so I, I think I, I Google searched something along the lines of like Slack app, um, Slack app integration or Slack audio app rather. And boom, I found Yak. And I was like, oh, man, this is so cool. I haven't signed up yet, but 
I'm heavily thinking about it, especially uh, reading as to how cool they are. So, so an example of a campaign structure with Yak, using Yak as an example, um, you have your top of funnel campaigns would be targeting people interested in competitors like Zoom or Loom. Um, you'll also have a lookalike audiences, a lookalike audience of past customers. And I don't know if I mentioned lookalike audience, but a lookalike audience is essentially a way to target people who are likely to be interested in your business because they're similar to your best existing customers. So you can upload a list onto Facebook of your past purchasers, or maybe if you have the pixel installed on your site and it's recording that. But you upload that list and you tell Facebook, hey, uh, I want you to find a list of people very, very similar to this original group of people. Do your thing. And you can select this at different percentages. Um, you can do different kinds of lookalike audiences, not just the past purchasers. I, that's generally my go-to at different percentages. Um, you can target people that have engaged, a lookalike audience of people that have engaged with your, ad, uh, with your post organically. So like audiences are really cool. Um, then you have maybe like middle of the funnel. So middle of the funnel targeting or campaign structure will be something like targeting people who have opted into your email list, but didn't convert ultimately. Um, and then also followers on Instagram and Facebook specifically. And then a bottom of the funnel uh, campaign structure and targeting would be, you could target users based, uh, users who have been to the, the client's website over the past 30 days, users who have viewed more than three pages of their site, that shows that they're very engaged with the brand, they're very interested, but they hadn't converted yet, so you want to hit them with an ad, maybe um, position your, your, what you offer in a different way to convince them, or users who have viewed a certain blog post. What's really cool with Yak is uh, they have certain pages where they actually compare um, Yak versus Zoom, Yak versus Loom. And that's really cool. So I would target, if, if I were advertising for Yak, um, I would target people that specifically uh, landed and, and visited those landing pages uh, because they're clearly doing their research. They spent some time researching. The, the user intent behind that kind of behavior is very high mm. so retarget them maybe hit them with a free offer of like a seven day free trial to drive it home now an example using yak as an example targeting or building out campaigns for google ads um a top of the funnel type of targeting would be as i mentioned before there's more than just search right there's search shopping display youtube as well so i would run a display campaign target in market audiences. So Google also has other options available for targeting and audience based targeting as well. And my favorite to use it in market audiences in market audiences are essentially a segment and a group of people who Google has deemed that they're in the market for X, they're in the market for Y. So mm -hmm. I did some quick research and I saw there's in market audiences for technophiles. I guess is people are super interested in technology and they're in the market to buy based on their uh, search behavior. And also people in the market for collaboration and conferencing tools. That's, that's perfect. So really great targeting. I want to test that out. So that would be top of the funnel. These are cold audiences, right? And the more middle of the funnel would be targeting keywords like add audio to Zap, uh, Slack, like I searched up. Uh, I'm clearly looking for a solution and so I'm a little warmer than someone just like browsing, um, browsing casually or competitors. You can target competitor keywords like Loom or Zoom directly. And a bottom of the funnel type of campaign structure and targeting would be target people who have visited their website, very similar to Facebook, right? Visited their website, viewed a blog post, stayed longer than maybe 60, 30 seconds, two minutes, whatever. And then also branded keywords. Um, so branded keywords, generally speaking, you, you want to target your own brand search terms if uh, you're researching and um, <clears throat> branded keywords will, like if you're researching, right, and um, 
you search like, okay, for example, yak, you search yak and a ton of other competitor keywords comes on. That means they're, they're targeting or they're bidding on your branded terms, your branded keywords. So if that's the case, you, you also want to do the same. Yeah. To remain top of page. That, that might be confusing. And you guys have any I think questions? It's totally clear. I, mean, I think it's just kind of like a little bit counterintuitive because you would think it would be natural for your site to come up first, but it's worthwhile to spend money to make sure when people are searching for you, they see you first. Yeah, exactly. 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 Well said. Um, Omnichannel approaches, omnichannel strategy strategies drive an 80% higher rate of incremental store visits for businesses. So you can incorporate, like I mentioned before, like um, the standing desk company, you can incorporate a combination of both. Um, and there are some really creative ways to distribute your budget, even on a small budget. Like granted, you have to do research on your industry CPCs and on the how expensive it is to even compete. Uh, but for example, for a more B2B kind of business, maybe 80% of your paid media budget goes to Google because you want to go after people that are searching for a specific um, solution that you provide. And it'd be hard to target that on Facebook. So you specifically want to do that on Google. And then you want to stay top of mind, right, as the prospect is doing that research against your competitors. So you spend the rest of the budget, 20% the rest of the budget onto Facebook, just remarketing campaigns. Um, and also usually on Facebook, CPCs are generally cheaper. And then if it, you're a more B2C, direct to consumer, maybe 80% of your budget uh, goes to Facebook and you target specific interests and demographics. And um, then you set up a branded campaign on Google. Those two work really uh, nicely hand in hand. Like for I that, think that's a good point. It doesn't come out often, but a little diversification at the beginning is. Uh, it, it sound, I, I, I like that you're making a case for it. Yep. Yeah, it, it, if your budget allows, it, it's worth testing. Yeah, and the two work really well. Work um, nicely together. So for like the standing desk, we do um, about sixty percent on Facebook and forty percent on Google. And so an example of an omni-channel approach on a small budget for Yak, I don't know exactly like their CPCs, but just like super high level, if their budget is limited, we can create a simple campaign for competitive search terms, right? Or a campaign targeting keywords like communication tools for remote teams, um, and then launch a small remarketing campaign on Facebook to serve ads who clicked download but didn't actually follow through. And, you know, like featuring some kind of free trial, some added incentive to, to convert them. Now, understanding campaign structure, right, and how to target. Now comes the messaging piece that really drives it home, right? So this right here is the hierarchy of value elements. It's very, very similar to, uh, it's modeled after Maslow's hierarchy of needs. The idea here is to position your brand to speak to one of these core values, to one of these core needs, right? So there's functional, emotional, life-changing, and social impact. And I use this model to go high level when I'm creating ads, like copy, even visuals, videos, all of it. I want to make sure I'm speaking to certain points for the end user. So using Yak as an example, just seems like my favorite tool right now. Using Yak as an example, right? They have some really cool messaging on their website. Sorry, were you gonna say something? No. Okay, so they have some really cool messaging on their website and it speaks to different um, value elements. So for example, Yak allows you to save time. So you can, they say literally on their website, you save up to 23 hours per week for meetings. That's huge. That's for me, that's considering to or making the switch from Slack to Yak. I'm seeing that. I'm like, yeah, I want to be more cost effective. I hate having to type everything out. It's annoying. Um, reduces cost. Make your team hyper efficient with voice messages. So they speak to the fact that you can, you know, the more efficient you are, the more you can save, essentially. And reduces anxiety. This was really interesting speaking to a more emotional need. Um, I found this to be really interesting copy, but uh, they mentioned some pain points when it comes to using Zoom. So being put on the spot is overwhelming. Ever been in a Zoom meeting where it's impossible to get a word in edgewise? 
that happens to me pretty often, actually. So teams wasting time talking over each other and sharing half-baked ideas without ever reaching a consensus. So reduces anxiety for the end user. Organizes, right? Um, never miss a beat with your the Yak voice messages. Um, unlike Zoom, you can actually keep inventory of each and every meeting. Uh, Yak organizes it accordingly, and they make sure that that they're positioning that and highlighting that specific need on their website. And they probably can do that within their advertising or their text ads, et cetera. Integrates in their life. So another point that they drive home is that uh, you can maintain an ideal work-life balance. So you can say no to late night messages, uh, meetings, uh, at, and calls at the crack of dawn. So it speaks to the fact that this really integrates to your life. It's highly functional. So these are some main points. Uh, you can go a little bit deeper here, but I just wanted to uh, speak about some main ones that stuck out. So ask yourself, what value elements does your product or service provide? And that will help you craft out a really solid and convincing messaging strategy. So ask yourself that and create that magnetic messaging um, and present that and position that through all your copy, all your visuals, and it will ultimately convert people uh, you're speaking because you're speaking to their innermost needs and their innermost desires. And it's extremely compelling. Now comes launching and measuring outcomes. Some tips when it comes to launching and measuring outcomes. Uh, you want to make sure conversion tracking is accurate and firing off correctly. Each of these platforms have their own types of conversion tracking. Uh, you really want to make sure this is on point because I've had a a ton of nightmare situations where the prospect or the client wasted a ton of money, like thousands of dollars, because their conversion tracking was completely off. They were firing off for the wrong events. And that data is essentially rendered useless. I can't deduce anything from that, you know? So it's just a waste. I can't even learn from it. It's, it's an absolute waste. So just don't be that guy. Uh, make sure your pixel is installed correctly and for the right events and the, for the correct events. It's really easy with Facebook. It's easy with Google if you're using Google Tag Manager. Um, if you have any questions there, I have a ton of resources when it comes to conversion tracking. So just message me. <clears throat> Track your goals on Google Analytics. Um, Excuse me. Google Analytics is a free tool. It's awesome. You can really pimp this tool out, uh, tracking your goals accurately and making sure like if you're running ads on face Facebook, make sure you have UTM parameters installed within your ads and UTM parameters will allow you to track within Google Analytics. So Google Analytics can say like, hey, this lead or this sale came directly from Facebook because you have a unique tracking URL. Yeah unique tracking um, parameters there. Google Data Studio is another really fun tool. I use a combination of this on uh, good old Excel slash Google Sheets. Um, this is free, but if you want to um, use this with Facebook ads, you would have to install a third party app called Supermetrics, which I think is like 40 bucks a month. Um, but sometimes that can be a hassle. Sometimes that can be annoying. So good old Google Sheets can really help you keep track of what you have going on. Um, and keeping track of your business overall. I have clients that have like a scorecard, a weekly scorecard. Um, you know, you can review monthly reporting month over month to review progress, to assess progress. There's a ton of other reporting platforms available. Reporting is an actual pain point for most marketers, but uh, when in doubt and when a platform gets too convoluted and confusing, I just always come back to Google Sheets. Yeah, um, totally. Yeah, just Google Sheets, man. Um, so keep track of your business overall metrics that matter to you. Like I mentioned, I have a client that keeps track uh, of a weekly scorecard and they track like, um, bulk orders, uh, wholesale orders, um, e-commerce conversion rate, how much we spend in paid, how much money we've generated from paid, um, traffic to the website, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it, it allows you to see, uh, where you're going and what, you know, what gets measured gets managed. And lastly, optimizing your results, right? So you've ran campaigns now, and now you're reviewing the results. You want to assess what's working, what's not working. Once you have enough data accrued, 
rule of thumb here is generally two weeks, but that depends on your budget. It depends on a lot of different factors, like how expensive your cost per clicks are, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but the idea here is that you'll have enough data or enough of a sample size, right, to deduce what's working, what's not working. And some ways you can optimize, maybe you can pause campaigns that aren't performing well, ad sets that aren't performing well, test new audiences. Um, maybe you sift through all the ads that you've launched and you see some of them have an extremely low click-through rate. So you pause those and you test new ones. And then increasing your lifetime value. And we touched upon this earlier. You know, what are some ways in which you can increase brand loyalty and increase the amount of upsells slash cross-sells if that applies to you? And really, this is like a tip in optimizing outside of the account. You know, you like I said, paid media is a tool to enhance everything you have really going on. So it's very dependent on what you have going on. And you can use other things to really um, alley-oop paid and just to make it more effective, like increasing your lifetime value, which increases profitability over time. So maybe you run more contests or you just have more engaging content. You, you have a really cool social media strategy on Instagram and Facebook, or you just have incredible customer service. There's so many ways to go about that depending on your business model. And you can also fill in the gaps with email marketing, right? Like I said, you want to enhance or you want to enhance what you have going on paid with more organic. Um, and email marketing is a great way to do that. So if you're e-commerce, with all my e-commerce clients, email marketing is absolutely crucial. We make sure we have certain flows set in place. So if someone comes to the website from paid, from a paid ad, um, and then they sign up for their email list, but they don't actually convert, well, email marketing can now do some of the legwork. They can, they can now like try and convert people, you know, like, like maybe added incentive, really engaging copy to convert them. So work with email marketing uh, in order to enhance your results. Increasing your landing page conversion rate. So this one's huge. This is something that I um, do a lot of. Paid media and CRO, which is conversion rate optimization, work nicely hand in hand, also SEO. Um, these two work nicely hand in hand because I want to know that the paid traffic that I'm sending to the landing page, I, I want to see that it's not in vain. Like I, I want it to convert, right? So with my clients, I do a lot of testing on the landing page. Um, lately, we've been testing videos, uh, branded videos on the homepage, talking about the brand's mission and things like that and, and seeing if that has some kind of influence on overall conversion rates, right? We're also testing video testimonials. Um, you can test better copy. Uh, there's so many things that you can test, things that move the needles. But right now we're testing more video testimonials and, and that's working really well within the e-commerce space. Um, and you, when you're testing these things, back to the measuring piece, you wanna make sure that you're measuring these efforts with um, some kind of platform like Google Optimize, which is free. So I'll run tests and I'll test the landing page without the video and with the video. And with Google Optimize, I can actually see the results. You know, I can see that this one had more of a lift than this one and this one won, this test one over that one. Cynthia, do you have a few minutes after 11? We have still have a lot of questions and I, I know this is your last um, slide, but I just wanna check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. I think there's one, well, yeah. I have some time. We can we can work that out. Okay. Okay. So back to um, making sure that you're measuring these tests. So I use a combination of Google Optimize, Hotjar, which is a heat mapping software to see where people maybe are falling off and where we can enhance those areas. I also like to see like a lot of recordings of how people interact on the site, how how are they bouncing, um, how are they interacting with the videos, how are they looking through testimonials. Testimonials are usually a really hot spot. So some low hanging fruit there, make sure whatever landing page you're sending traffic to, even if it's organic, you're sending organic traffic, make sure you have reviews and testimonials that are, those are super impactful. Um, I also test out just Uno for like, I use test Uno rather to test like exit intent pop-ups to run customer surveys, um, just to get a sense of how things are happening, how we can improve moving forward, how we can improve the overall experience. The goal is to obviously increase CRO. When you increase CRO, I mean, sorry, conversion rate, you increase overall profitability. And so here are some, these 
these uh, slides will be available to you. So you can refer back to this, but here are just some industry benchmarks. So if you're e-commerce, your e-commerce company, your average and your desired conversion rate is between two and 3%. That's really good. Um, if, it, if you have like some kind of free opt-in landing page, that's 20% webinar opt-in page 20 percent and then if you're more service-based a request to quote landing page at four percent and then some final tips and, and i'll answer questions after this um always i think i mentioned this before but always go for low-hanging fruit right if your budget is super limited and you have traffic running to your website marketing campaigns are your best bet right um when you're testing a new platform like say the person that asked about snapchat uh, granted that you've maxed out Facebook and Google, you know, you've maxed out those avenues, you've tested it and, you know, you've you squeezed all the juice out of that and you want to start off and testing a new platform, test a new platform like Pinterest or Snapchat or even TikTok. I haven't touched that yet. Um, start with remarketing. If your remarketing campaign performs well, if you're getting favorable results, right? Um, that's usually an indication that your prospecting campaigns perform really well. So start with remarketing, build upon that mm -hmm. and start slow, especially if you have a small budget. Um, competitive research. This is huge. This is a huge part of my strategy as well. Uh, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, you know, if, and it's also when you're doing competitive research, you can see, um, excuse me, you can see if a competitor isn't, or a ton of your competitors aren't advertising on Google. There's usually a reason why, you know, maybe it's just too expensive and they're focusing on their, their efforts on Facebook. That's a huge indication to, to see what your competitors are doing. And maybe you do, a com you know, what they're doing, uh, but you, you improve upon what they're doing and you just fill in the gaps that they're not doing. So maybe, you know, they could do a better job at advertising or maybe their targeting sucks or whatever. You can enhance that and you can use um softwares like uh i use spyfu and sem rush and then i just research um the the, com the competitions overall like within facebook their ads on the facebook ads library there's other platforms for that but i just stick to facebook ads library and you know if you're thinking about okay so should i market on google facebook what, sh what should i do you know like assess what's working organically and add on to that yeah, that's the best way to go about um, things initially. If you're doing really well, like I mentioned before, if you're doing really well on Google organically, maybe if your CPCs aren't too expensive and it makes sense, you run a couple of Google campaigns. Or if you're, you know, like you're doing well organically on Google and your e-commerce, you run shopping campaigns. Yeah. There's usually what's working organically is an indication that you can expand there. And Overall, that's that's it, guys. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. I know there's certain aspects of this talk that goes zero to 100 really quick. Like I said, these platforms. This, this I mentioned that to you earlier, but it, it does. Cynthia, this was great, and I'm just gonna um, I'm gonna just dive into these questions. Um, and uh, the here. first one is, how do you feel about LinkedIn for paid advertising? How do I feel about LinkedIn? Um, LinkedIn advertising is pretty good if you're more in the B2B space. Those clicks are really expensive. I think average, don't quote me on this, but between six to $9 just per one click. So what works with uh, LinkedIn is if you have some kind of opt-in page, you have like a free download that you can initially um, get people into your funnel and then you do email marketing or you have email marketing do most of the lift from there. Mm, yeah, so that's great. That usually works with LinkedIn really nicely, but you know, like you have to be pretty confident about what you can deliver with emails, right? <laughs> yeah, when in doubt, test it out. If you if the budget allows, it's just extremely expensive. Fair enough, and I will say, and I would love to be contradicted on this. We don't get a lot of great feedback about LinkedIn market, uh, LinkedIn paid ads uh, no, speakers either. on this show. <laughs> but what? I I I, it's just so expensive. Like you have yeah. to have a really high like LTV. Yeah. yeah. Um, what tools do you recommend to test landing pages? Um, great, great, great question. So there are some landing page builders um, like, uh, what's that? Oh, I just slipped my head. But I guess if you have like a custom landing page or like within your website, the best tool that I love to use is Google Optimize. 
that's when you can set specific tests like like i mentioned before like so if you want to test um your landing page with a video without a video you can set that up really nicely on google optimize and you can assess which um test perform best which one had the highest lift and you can even um connect that to your revenue so it will say like test or test one you can name them accordingly led to an increase in five percent revenue et cetera, et cetera. so google optimizes is, is really my favorite tool Great, and thanks, Anna, for adding uh, Instapage and Optimizely. Um, do you include the agency's fees as part of ROAS calculation? Thanks, yes. I, I threw that into um, the calculators because that's that's pretty important. Great, that's okay. an overhead cost. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, do you see Facebook reaching a certain demographic more than others? Does that factor into the decision? Um, do I see Facebook reaching more more demographics more so than others? But a certain demographic. Do you see? Are there any demographics you would say? You know, this is more for Facebook, and this one's more for Google. Um, would you would, would you break it down by demographics, or is that just like too niche? It's a little bit too niche. But recently, Facebook removed like a lot of demographic targeting just because uh -huh. they deemed that that is um, a lot of inequalities there so you can't really target based on so previously you could target based on household income um and certain sort of race like it, there's workarounds about that but they removed those targeting so got it it really depends on like what your product is and i can assess it from there so maybe if you give me like an indication of what your business is what you're serving what you're selling i could probably answer a little better um, and that brings me to a, another question, but from Sheila, what do you think about having Facebook automatically determine your target audience versus you specifying the filters? What do you mean by filters? I think that, well, I think that Facebook offers, you know, they optimize it or you do. <laughs> I think uh, by filters, uh, she's referring to, you know, stating the geography, the target demographics, things like that, um, interests. Um, I, I do believe Facebook allows you, gives you the option to just let them do it. Uh, Sounds like you would probably do. be a hell on that. Oh, yeah, I don't think, I don't think, we can. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, but you can like have really broad campaigns. So with Facebook, machine learning is huge and you want to let Facebook do a lot of the let work. Uh, but you want to give Facebook some kind of direction too. So I use a lot of CBO campaigns, campaigns budget optimized campaigns, as opposed to optimizing budget on the ad set level. And okay. I also run a lot of dynamic creative campaigns. I test that out. So that means I pretty much plug in a ton of different creatives. Um, so, so something I'm running for a client right now, I plugged in all of their best testimonials Mm -hmm. um, on Facebook, all of their highest performing copy based on historical data. I just threw that into uh, an ad set on, or an ad creative on Facebook and selected a very broad targeting. So like lookalike audiences at like three to 5% and let Facebook do the work. But mm -hmm. you know, like you, you want to give Facebook the direction. You want to have some strategy behind it. I created that very broad campaign knowing that these ads converted very well previously in the past based on data. Mm -hmm. So Facebook, the more information you give Facebook, the mm -hmm. more Facebook can optimize. And Google's kind of following suit right now a little bit, but Facebook is huge for that. CBO campaigns, uh, dynamic creative campaigns perform really well. Great, uh, thank you. Um, uh, Eric's asking for new retail e-commerce brands just starting out, uh, just shifted to, okay. Uh, what would you consider you know, the monthly minimum budget to launch a, a, an effective campaign. And, you know, maybe if there's an amount or maybe there's like an anchor, like it should be five times, <laughs> you know, yeah. your, it's, um, it's cost. Always, or, it's always, it depends. Yeah. <laughs> That's the answer that yeah. most digital marketers fall back to because it's true. It depends on what it is you're selling, how comp competitive that is. Um, generally speaking to get, a meaningful amount of da data, at least a thousand usually. And start off, if you have traffic already coming to your website, I would start off maybe like starting off at 500, I guess, depending mm -hmm. on how competitive it is for you and your, comp your, your landscape. Um, test out remarketing, just start with remarketing and start building from there. Um, 
but really like I, I tend to work with budgets that are like 10k and up I just I have fun testing more um, but you can do some damage with a thousand dollars you could do some damage with 2k yeah um, that and that's been my experience as well uh, just to to emphasize that um, okay next question what are your recommendations for reaching individuals who are innovation leaders or directors at companies um, and providing services like workshops, seminars, and learning? So Bruce is asking, um, reaching innovation leaders. It's yeah. I think, a little so, case study. <laughs> I actually had a, a client previously um, through my old agency called Karis Negotiations. So what they do is they run negotiation seminars. We do really well on Google. So you want to target people that are searching specifically for that type of um, workshop that you provide. So they'll search like workshops. I remember we had like our main keywords were negotiation seminar near me, negotiation seminar within a location. Google works really well. And we actually, that company, we did do well with LinkedIn. Uh, just because yeah, I was going to say, it sounds like if you know the role that you know, of your target audience, like with that specificity, you might, you can target directly, like on yeah. LinkedIn, they have, like, you can target direct job, um, job roles, whereas yeah. you can also do that on Facebook, but you know, anyone can say that they're like Superman or like the Hulk on Facebook. So it's not, <laughs> it's not as accurate as LinkedIn. Usually people don't really play as much on LinkedIn. It's very accurate, which is why those cost per clicks are so expensive. But yeah. That works for that business because their um, average order value is like 10K and up. Yeah. Okay. Um, so next question. Yeah. Thank you, Bruce. Um, oh, thank you, Bruce. <laughs> Sheila's asking, um, how can I determine an appropriate ROI on marketing spend to use for my startup's financial projections? I think here we're getting into like research and comps by industry. Mm -hmm. So that calculator that I put together for, I guess you would use the one for lead gen, you just plug in, um, your specific overhead cost right there and it'll calculate it for you. It's just a matter of knowing your overhead costs, right? And factoring it in overall. Um, it, and that question, like it, it varies. Like, I don't know your exact numbers. I need some time to like make those calculations. It very much varies, but just know your numbers, work through that calculator. Feel free to ask me some questions even. Um, there, you know, might be other factors like that calculator is really like, it's the most honed in pulse you can possibly get, but there's always in a business, there's always just like crazy expenses. Like, um, my client the other day, just ha the manufacturer send like all the wrong standing desks. And so he had to pay out of cost. Like yeah. it's hard to factor that into your advertising. Right. But yeah. at least you can measure what you're doing on online advertising. Whereas before, you know, before we just had billboards, you can't really measure that. You can't really measure posters and stuff like that. So, we, yeah, you need to be able to work in a fairly like unit economics driven framework. And there are a lot of extraneous factors at the beginning. And so it's there, that's kind of the, that's kind of the part of the job, you know, kind of honing that in um, as you're thinking about your spend economics. Um, uh, are impressions a useful metric? Um, cause Alana is clarifying, like should earlier stage, earlier campaigns really focus on more clicks, downloads, purchases, like more tangible results. You should be focusing on downloads, like impressions. This is, these are what big, big brands that have like unlimited budgets really care about. Like yeah. I ran campaigns for like, uh, I guess I can't say, but I ran campaigns for really big brands. Well, and they, it's, 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 <laughs> yeah. And it's insane how they only care about these vanity metrics. They're essentially vanity metrics, like impressions, yeah. reach, these things don't matter. It's how, they're ultimately converting to your end conversion goal. How are you tying that all then? Um, but, you know, impressions are important to keep track of. And so is reach. You want to understand, you know, like you want to tie that into a main conversion goal. So like if you're having, you know, like I'll look at impressions and I'll be like, wow, impressions are really down today. What's happening? You know, it's an indicator that maybe something's really wrong in the account, you know, overall. Like it, it's more of like a a pulse of what's happening, but I wouldn't base any business decisions based on something so flimsy or not necessarily flimsy, but more vanity. Base it on a real conversion goal. 
We are in a little bit of a weird situation right now. We've never gone this far over. And Cynthia, you're so nice and generous to do this. And we still have a ton of, of people in here and questions. I'm happy to, in. Uh, well, the problem is I'm So we're going to... Um, refresh this and Danny's going to come on and host this um, to make sure if you have more questions, please submit them. If we're only on five more minutes, that's okay too. And I apologize. I just have a doctor's appointment. So um, I, well, okay. So Danny's going to come in and what we're going to do is, and hopefully this works, I'm going to go out and uh, Danny's going to come in and refresh and uh, everything should be cool. And Cynthia, you might be able to just keep talking and going through these questions. Um, I don't want to go through these. Oh, I mean, right. I could just do the chat. Ask or question. do the chat. Oh, yeah. Okay. Everyone, have a great Cool. Thank you guys so much for having me. Am I still on? Can you guys still see me? You can ask more questions. I'm in quarantine. So, oh, okay. Hello. Yeah, I'm better to do. <laughs> hey, Cynthia. Hey, how are you? Good. Uh, yeah. This was very super. Thanks for spending some extra time on. Everyone, I'm sorry. I look. Uh, like I'm in quarantine. I didn't think I was gonna be on a camera today. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, let me put some makeup on because yeah, I, I, I needed I some of that. Too. <laughs> I need this little dirty stash. Um, so we just have a <laughs> we just have a, just a few more questions here, and then sure. I think we'll reply through. I just them. wanted to shout out Raymond's. That's awesome, Raymond's. Um, I, I hope this really helped give you a ton of clarity. Yeah, Cynthia is a. Uh, I, we both went to St. John, so we're both Johnnies. So yeah, we're both uh, this, Johnnies. Are you this, still living in Queens? Yeah, actually, I live in Port Salts. I live oh. pretty close to the to the uh, campus. That's awesome. I don't live yeah. too far from you. Yeah, are you? Oh, are you in Queens? I'm not in Queens. I'm like kind of like borderline Long Island Queens. I can't really rep Queens, but I still um, rep Queens because I went to school there. So. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Queens doesn't get enough support, so I, I appreciate that. Um, okay, so this question's from Alana. It's a uh, yeah, I think you were just talking about this. It was um, our like impressions you use a good enough metric, but you you would say that you should be focusing on things like clicks, downloads, and purchases, right? Or do you think there are cases? Yeah, where the views I are think good? you should focus on focus on metrics that really matter to your business that actually add to your bottom line. I don't think imp you know impressions are so are not as tangible as like you know there's levels to it. There's impressions, then you go even further to click through rate than downloads than conversion rate you know like it's a you can you know impressions matter like i said it show like if you're going to a doctor you go to the doctor and the doctor says you know you have, have a really high fever like that's how i look at an account like oh my god you know impressions are really low today like i gotta figure out what's happening it's usually more of an indication if you're an advertiser you up you're looking at what's um some any any spikes any anything that's going wrong if, like I said, if impressions are super down, something's going on, something's happening. Maybe the pixel isn't firing off accurately. Mm. Um, so it's more of like a pulse, like a pulse. It's not necessarily, I wouldn't base any business decisions off of impressions or these are just vanity metrics. Yeah. Ground them with downloads, ground them with uh, transactions, ground them cool. with some, yeah, signups. Got it. Yeah, I, I think that's a great answer. Um, okay. Um, okay, this one is kind of based on like an example you were talking about during, uh, during your talk, which is that like, your standing desk example was a good one. Um, how would you go about like selling them on Facebook? Uh, he mentioned Facebook groups, but I'm gonna assume you think more like traditional ads. Um, so Facebook groups is more of an organic type of advertising. Yeah. Excuse me. So when I'm running ads, look, for example, for that client specifically, I am running ads that are, that are going to many different placements. Um, the placements that are allotted are just like high level, the, um, the, just the, the newsfeed, um, Instagram discovery, um, Instagram newsfeed, there's a ton of other ones. Um, but I'm like, if you're to target, you can't target Facebook groups, essentially, is what I'm trying to say. That's more of an organic um, type of initiative, an organic strategy. Yeah. Uh, so with Facebook advertising, we target specific 
audience segments and we have a full and robust funnel and we're testing a ton of different and compelling creatives. We're constantly optimizing that. So um, that's what I'm doing with that client. And we're also running a little bit of Pinterest for marketing. Um, we're also um, doing Google ads as well, Google shopping. Cool, okay. Um, let's get that one out. Uh, He wants to try and target values that are higher up if possible. Um, I'm not sure what values. Means. Values that are higher up. Yeah. I've, what do you mean by values? Um, not sure. If Anna is still watching, could you explain values? But other than that, let's do this other one from Raymond. Um, are there specific approaches or channels you would focus on for Gen Z and millennial marketing for a SaaS product? Um, yeah. Uh, I think, I mean, everyone's on Google, everyone and their mom's on Google, right? Yeah. Um, but you can get really creative on Instagram, Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. You can get super creative. I would say tap into Instagram as much as you possibly can, you know, maximize that and then start testing new platforms like Snapchat, testing platforms like TikTok, you know, like I said, go with where you're doing well organically. So, you know, if you're doing really well organically on TikTok, maybe it makes sense to add more or, or start paid advertising on TikTok. I personally haven't touched TikTok yet. It doesn't really make sense for the type of clients that I manage. Um, but, you know, yeah, try that. Instagram, Snapchat, we're really good. Yeah. It, well, it sounds like uh, Raymond's going to reach out to you and then maybe you both can like dive more into that. Um, but cool. I think that's like all the questions. And then um, everyone, I just kind of want to say thanks for tuning in. Cynthia, thank you so much. This was like so awesome. Uh, I thought this was like really, really great and helpful. I thought you used a really good selection of GIFs. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, and then um, yeah, everyone, I shared uh, her info here. Uh, her email is c at cynthiasmarketing.com. Uh, if you scroll up earlier in the chat, you'll find like everything you need to know. Um, definitely check out her media calculator and her site. Reach out to her for any marketing help. And then other than that, I hope everyone has an excellent weekend. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Thank you, Callie. And um, shout out to Drayshawn. Thank you guys yeah. so much. I really appreciate it. And uh, feel free to hit me up with any questions and I'll answer as soon as I can. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Awesome. Goodbye, guys.